This uh, directional sign used to greet me as I approached the uh, housing estate I live in, in Monkstown, County Dublin. And I was very fond of it for all it told me about the history of the area I lived in. Don Lera evokes King Lera, 5th century King of Ireland, who established a naval base of some sort, uh, probably to, to sort of uh, to raid the British coast. Uh, he established it down at the mouth of an estuary uh, close by on the coast. Kilinyin Lenin celebrates the seven daughters of Lenin, who established a 6th six, six, century monastery in the area, and the ruins of their little church is still there. Um, Delganish, Dalky, is, um, comes from Viking word Dalk I, meaning Thorn Island, and it reminds us of our Viking heritage. So for me, it was a little summary of the history of the area I lived in. Now, I grew up speaking Irish, and I've often felt that, um, and I learned the geography of Ireland in Irish, and I sometimes feel that the um, English language version of names causes a loss of picture. For instance, when we were, say, as children, say, going to Dublin, and I was steeped in legends and steeped in, um, if you like, folklore, um, I often had a, a sense of, of, if you like, traveling through history. Letter Kenny, Dietrich Canning, Hillside of the Cannons, which is essentially, it was my own surname. And that was something that we took very seriously. Then you get to Cyan Mills. This is on the road to Dublin. Cyan Mills looks like uh, someplace associated with the Old Testament. But in Irish, it's the Inn, the seat of Finn McCull. Now, Finn McCull was a very uh, vivid presence in my childhood. And um, certainly uh, my father, who was my teacher as well, um, used to point out where Finn had pursued uh, <coughs> uh, sort of one, uh, if you like, enemy or another, and where the spear split the hill and uh, that crack was still visible. And these were very vivid images. It's in that sense that I feel there's a loss of picture sometimes. RD was where Cochullan and Ferdia fought to the death, Ahurdia. Uh, in the uh, great Cochulain legends. Um, swords looks perfectly coherent in English, but in fact in Irish it's Sword Column Killer, the um, spring well of Column Kill. And so going along this route was, as I say, travelling through history for me in a very vivid way. Now, obviously, learning the geography of Ireland, there were other names elsewhere that caught my attention as well. And just for the fun of it, um, Drum Shanbo. In Irish is Drimshan Wall, the back of an old cow, which suggests the topography of the area. But it's a rather vivid image. Um, and then Limavadi, County Derry, Yemowadi, meaning dog's leap. So there is a sense in which knowing the meaning of a place name adds interest and adds, uh, for me, a considerable uh, insight. Now, throughout the country, obviously, most place names are derived from the Irish language, but that's not necessarily the case in County Dublin. Uh, jo the great scholar John O'Donovan, who uh, accompanied the uh, Arden survey around the country and, um, if you like, settled the names. These were, as well as where names were in Irish and um, could change as, and were variations on on names from place to place. One of the purposes of the Art and Survey was, this the 18th, late 1830s, early 1840s, was to establish for definite, for final, in a final way, the names of, of places. O'Donovan conducted um, a lot of research locally to get the pronunciation right and actually to establish the um, origin of names. So, um, he, he pro performed a, a wonderful, wonderful service. But this is what I had to say about County Dublin. The greater part of names are, are modern fancy names derived from months and views and trees and flowers and shrubs. So if you're familiar with the, with the play translations, um, there's in Dublin, the English language form of names was settled much earlier 
than in uh, Ballybeg or Barnfoot, places that uh, come up in, 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 um, in translations. Um, this is the Down Survey Map of 1665 for the um, Monkstown Parish. Now, the parish at the time extended from, uh, you can see on the left there, Butterstown, obviously Butterstown nowadays, out as far as Dockey. And even in 1665, modern names were established in English in our area. Monkstown is very um, recognisable, Kill of the Grange, uh, <coughs> and Stillorgan, as well as obviously Butterstown, which comes from the Irish, incidentally, Ballyan Woher, Butterstown, um, the town of the road. Um, and you can see Kalini Parish there next to us. So a lot of these names were established much earlier in the Dublin area and in the uh, greater, if you like, Dunleary, Rathdown area, uh, much, much earlier than the uh, rest of the country, than other parts of the country. Um, but some of the local strands I'm just going to give some consideration to include uh, these legend, early Christian, colonial, um, topography and landscape, the Italianate influence, which is quite, quite, quite evident in our area, and then some personal names. So first of all, legend. Well, Dunleary gets its name from King Lear, 5th century, established his uh, base at the mouth of the little estuary locally, as I said. He was the son of Nile of the Nine Hostages, who quite possibly brought St. Patrick to Ireland as a slave. And the, uh, if you like, the Dun of Lear may well have been uh, a post from which he raided the coast of Britain and carried off slaves. It was just common practice at the time. Uh, Lera later, um, as King met St. Patrick in this um, little sculpture at the top, just at the entrance to St. Patrick's Church in Monkstown, shows <coughs> uh, Lera being uh, baptised by Patrick. There are conflicting legends, conflicting accounts of this, but certainly um, Lera is associated with the um, confrontation at Slain, where he lit, where Patrick lit the uh, Haskell fire just seen from Tara and caused a, a, a very serious uh, confrontation, let's put it like that. But it's a, it, it's a vivid image of an actual historical figure. The early Christian um, heritage is very evident in very many place names, Kilbegnet, Kilbog, Kilcross, anything with Kil um, su is suggestive of a religious uh, origin, Kil meaning church. Sometimes Kil can be derived from Kil meaning wood, but um, these I'm selecting are generally agree agreed to have been derived from a, from a church or monastic settlement, Kilmacud, Kilmore, Kiltiernan, and so on. And there are others that are less evidently associated with the early Christian period. Uh, Tully, originally known as Tullahan Aspect, this Tullahan Aspect, the, the, uh, the mound, if you like, of the bishops, so obviously a, 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 an ecclesiastical site as well. Rath Michael may have been named after St. Michael, whom the uh, Vikings interestingly adopted as a patron of mariners, or more likely it's a corruption of Rath Vikhail, which was an earlier, um, an earlier figure, um, and the uh, Rath then was an early, um, an early uh, site, or um, well, if you like a fortified settlement. Uh, in the area, and the, the, the monastery was located inside it. Monkstown, of course, as well, less evidently, uh, as well, is um, quite an old, uh, has quite quite old historical associations with uh, the early Christian period. Um, but the modern name Monkstown really derives from the fact that the um, Cistercian monks of St. St. Mary's Abbey, originally Benedictine, subsequently Cistercian, um, had very extensive lands in the area. In fact, at the time of the Reformation, St. Mary's Abbey, which gave its name to Abbey Street and uh, so on in town, um, St. Mary's Abbey owned an area equivalent to 20% of the area of modern day County Dublin. Monkside Castle was built to defend, if you like, the, um, the, the, the farmlands from the depredations of locals who naturally felt aggrieved at having been dispossessed. Um, 
the name Monkstown itself, of course, um, it, the name Monkstown originally is first recorded in the, in the uh, 16th century at the time of the Reformation. But there's an older name, Carry Brennan, which is uh, remembered in Carrick Brennan Road. And Carry Brennan, for Monkstown, uh, is recorded in the 12th century. This is the uh, Church of Killer the Grange. It's out of sight, off the road, but people don't, and people don't notice it. But so many place names around get their name from this little church, um, which is dedicated to the to the uh, to the to, the, uh, to, to Saint Fintan. So you find Kill Avenue, Saint Fintan's Park, Abbey Road. These all have to do with the little church. It was sometimes referred to as Clonkeen and Clon. Clanchine, obviously, is now sort of thought of to be a little bit farther away. Um, Clan, Clanchine, the, uh, the, I suppose, gentle, fine meadow. Um, and this, as I say, this would have had a reference in the 12th century. But we can see how um, small churches, monasteries, um, have had a big impact on place names. And of course, that's true for, the, for, for all of Ireland. Um, very well known, Kalinian Union, as I mentioned, the, the, the little monastery attributed to the uh, establishment of the seven daughters of Union, uh, who dedicated themselves to the religious life in the 6th century. Um, and they've given their name to Kalani Road and all places to do with uh, Kalani. Um, their brother Coleman also joined the um, religious life, and one wonders what um, Yanyan and his wife thought on a winter's evening as they sat alone, and the entire family was off uh, dedicated to the uh, religious life. Um, yeah, I mentioned Monkstown. Monkstown Castle was is essentially a 14th century construction, and this here we see it in the 18th century. Um, much more substantial building uh, than it is uh, now. And the um, association with Carrie Vrenlin is uh, kept alive in this old post office sign that's on view uh, locally in, in, in Hewitt's. Then there's the colonial legacy, which is very, uh, I suppose, very evident in memorials like the George Fourth Memorial and the uh, Victoria Monument down at the Lera Harbour. George IV, of course, uh, famously um, gave the Lera the name Kingston uh, in memory of himself or in honour of himself in 1821. Victoria visited four times and would have a uh, visitor in four times and came through at the Lera on each of those occasions, or Kingston's Clause, of course, uh, on those occasions. Um, this um, map, 1756, the Roke map, shows you Dunleary uh, there, and there's very little to, 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 to speak of. Um, it's a small little harbour. Um, it has the merit of being on an estuary that doesn't sit up. Dublin was very difficult of access, on account of the sandbars and, and so on. But what was in Dunleary's favour was that it just didn't sit it up in the same way. So um, what you see there is a little pier um, projecting out. And that was 1717, it wasn't, it wasn't long there at the time, it was a short while later, short while earlier. There's a coffee house, which, is, uh, which you sometimes see in old prints. And um, there's a little, there's this sort of a, a rambling sort of series of, of houses there down beside it. To the left, you can see Monkstown Castle and so on, which would have been quite a prominent building even at that time. Farther up, you'll see Newtown and Black Rock Town, and I'll come back to that uh, later on. Um, but that was 1756, and certainly through to the early, early uh, 19th century, Dunleary was a small fishing poor fishing village with little to, if you like, to, to, to commend it. However, 1821, uh, it became Kingstown, the royal visit of uh, George IV. 
Now, George was a, not a, but a somewhat disreputable character. One of the reasons he was in Ireland was just to get away from home. He had fallen out earlier, once he had been regent for, uh, from the 1811 to 1820 when he became king. But um, he had fallen out with his father and mother previously. He had fallen out with his wife, whom, whom he had a very difficult relationship. In fact, he banned her from his uh, coronation. And um, the story is told that when uh, the time, time of Napoleon's death, an aide approached uh, George and said, Sire, your greatest enemy is dead. Is she by George? That uh, was his, his response. So not a very pleasant fellow, but this is how one author described him at the time he was embarking from Dunlera, speechlessly drunk and suffering from a distressing looseness. Um, not a very, not a very nice way to uh, to be. Um, so Dunleary became king, or Dunleary as it was, became Kingston, and then lots of streets became got got English English names. Obviously, George Street, the principal street in Dunleary, or in Kingston at the time. You have <clears throat> and all these names: Anglesey, Northumberland, Addington, Carlisle, uh, Clarence, Cumberland, and these. Several of these are brothers of uh, George IV himself. Um, Adelaide was his sister-in-law. So a, lot, a proliferation, if you like, of uh, royal names at that time. I see George Street Lower, Wellington Street, and one proprietor, one business in uh, Wellington Street is particularly well named, taking advantage of the name of the street, Waterloo. So there you are, that's a good... It's a good, a good joke. Then you have Trafalgar Terrace, um, constructed in uh, 1855. It was 50 years uh, or commemoration of the uh, Battle of Trafalgar. And um, so the terrace got the name on it. And above the, uh, above the house, you'll see sort of victory wreaths. Um, I suppose celebrating uh, Nick, uh, Nelson's victory of the time. Um, this is York Road. Now, apart, obviously, the name is interesting, York Road or Avery. Um, street names in Irish, where the, the, the bilingual street name was introduced in, um, in the early 20th century, I think. Um, certainly that was the case in Dublin, I imagine, was the same in, uh, in Leary. Um, but I suppose what's interesting here too is the, the sign itself. It's stone um, and it's incised and are carved. And then the lettering is in, seems to be poured lead. It's a, it's a style of doing things that you see in graveyards on gravestones. Uh, but there are a number of examples in the general Dunlair area. Um, but somebody took a bit of trouble with the Irish because Avrach, the uh, the Irish they used for York uh, comes from the uh, Latin Iboricum. So a certain amount of scholarship and research went into uh, the name change. But Kingstown became Dunlera on 6th of July 1920, when <clears throat> this minute was passed by the Kingstown Town Commissioners. Resolved that this Kingstown Urban District Council be hereby, hereby changed their name and style and the name of the district to the Dunlera Urban District Council and the Dunlera Urban District, respectively. The motion was proposed by uh, a councillor, Ohoi, and was passed 1920, 99 years after being given the name um, Kingstown. And unusually in Ireland, the Irish language form of the name is what is, is, is the only form, um, and there isn't, if you like, an English. Uh, in the English version of it. Um, and this then sort of carries on, the amendment was passed and so on. Um, this is another interesting little, if you like, street sign, Dunleary. This is down on, uh, down in uh, Alden there, down beside the party kitchen, for those of you who are familiar with the area. Again, delightful uh, little artifact in its own, in its own way. Um, again, just to draw attention to the trouble people took about, uh, I suppose, identifying Irish language names, um, this is Ptolemy's map of, um, 
of Ireland, and so far as he would have heard of it from sailors. Um, just two things to draw attention to. The island down bottom right is <coughs> Isola Mona. And then uh, the, you also see there are uh, people um, in Blani, and there's uh, a place down the, uh, obviously, what appears to be the Bay of Dublin, or Dublin Bay, uh, a place marked Iblana. So this has given rise to a number of names, Anglesey Avenue. So that Isla Mona is in fact Anglesey off the coast of Wales. And somebody took the trouble of actually translating Anglesey Avenue to Iwana Mona, which is you know, a tribute to, to whoever took the trouble. Um, but you'll also see Iblana Avenue, again, uh, a very old name associated with Dublin uh, from that time. Again, Tarlila, again, you see these strange signs, rather unusual styles, and there's quite a variety in, in, uh, in the general than there. This is Carlisle Terrace, the heart than Carlisle in the old script. Um, another, I suppose, influence on place names is the actual uh, old landscape. It has to be borne in mind that um, the coastline was not inhabited really until the um, late 18th and early 19th century, Tanera um, had a population, the, the town of Tanera had a population of about 300 in 1815, and that grew dramatically during the uh, subsequent half century because of the harbour and the railway. And the town owed its growth to the harbour. The harbour um, was a more, if you like, was gave, gave the lead and created, if you like, the um, the need for an urban development. Um, the hundreds of workers who were, if you like, involved in the construction of the uh, harbour, um, obviously many of them settled in the area, but they also required services, and so sort of a whole retail community had had to grow up, but. Over time, and particularly with the development of the uh, railway from 1834, became a fashionable residential area as well. And uh, so the Dunleary of um, 1800 was, um, I should say, just transformed enormously during the following 50, 50 years. But these are some names that give an indication of what the landscape looked like. Glengara Park, Glengarriff, the Rough Glen, um, Tubbermore Road, the, the Big Well, Corrig Road, the rock, rock Road, essentially, and Rock Hill. Now, as I mentioned earlier, John O'Donovan observed that there weren't that many um, place names derived from Irish in the area. So <clears throat> there's, there, there are far less than there would be uh, inland or in country areas. But... There are some others as well. You have Knock McCree, um, Knock Sinna. Knock, Knock Sinna, interestingly, the, the hill of the um, fox. And then Clon Keen, as I mentioned, the, the meadowland. Um, so this is a, another little interesting name, Tubbernee. Tubbernee is the washing well. Now, some people have associated the past with St. Nathan, St. Nathan. Our St. Nathy, um, who is also celebrated in Taney, Chathnahi, or the Haney, uh, his house. But Tobernyi, uh, Padre Gukari, who has published a, book, a little booklet on the place names and, and street names in the general area of Dunnair uh, Rathdown, um, suggests that in fact it was possibly um, associated, as many wells were, associated with certain cures, and in this case, cures for the eyes. So. If you washed your eyes, you know, it was a cure for uh, ailments of your, in, in, in uh, your eyesight. And he suggests that's possibly uh, a better um, suggestion than, than, than uh, St. Nye. Um This is the older sign, which unfortunately is broken. Many of these old signs are really, really nice artifacts and uh, worth, um, if you like, worth, worth retaining, worth keeping in mind. I suppose one of the things that strikes one is the great variety of different types of signs. You'll see some really nice um, uh, 
I suppose, Art Deco yellow and black signs as well in places. And in other places, you see ceramic signs. It's in this case, um, in Black Rock, uh, where Lady Arabella Denny um, uh, played host to John Wesley on his um, several, of, uh, several of his visits to, to Ireland. Uh, Leprestown's an interesting place name. Now, the Irish Bile on the Lower tells us a lot more. It doesn't have anything to do with leopards. Lower is leper, and what we're talking about here is the establishment of a leper hospital uh, in um, the area in the uh, 13th century. And that um, leper's town became leopard's town, which is quite uh, misleading. It's also suggested um, that Galloping Green gets its name from the fact that people hastened and scuttled past leopard's, leper's town for fear of um, infection. And this is, these are some, some um, sort of older versions of the name. Now, uh, just to, before I go on to, just going back to the Roke map, you look a little bit farther up, Black Rock Town, um, and you see underneath it, the Black Rock from whence the town takes its name. So Black Rock actually gets its name from the fact that the geology, the underlying geology, changes at that point. Um, the, if you like, the granite of the Dunleary area changes to the limestone of the Central Plain. And at the boundary, there was a prominent, obviously, uh, rock or there were prominent rocks projecting out into the sea, together now covered by Black Rock Park. Where um, and these rocks gave the town its name. I, I imagine that uh, the, the, the the town was probably named from the fact that this rock would be much more heaven, much more visible from the sea. Um, so Black Rock Town got its name from Black Rocks, and this print shows us you have the Black Rocks, New Town Born, Brayhead, and etc. in Ireland. Newtown Bourne is interesting because if you look at this map again, you can see slightly below Black Rock, Newtown. An old name for the area was Newtown on the Strand and Newtown Castle Burn. So again, these are associated, Newtown Castle Burn, obviously uh, associated with the Burn uh, family. Um, and this is sort of the, the geology map. You can see that uh, sort of reddish orange part is the granite of our area, our, our area and then meeting with the uh, with Black Rock and the um, where, where they meet is where you get the Black Rock. Of course, Carrig Lee is um, grey rock and that refers to the granite. So the underlying geology has given us some of these names as well. Um, this is what a what a wall looks like, a typical wall looks like in Dunleary Docky. But as you move towards <coughs> Black Rock and a little bit past Black Rock, limestone is mixed in. And then as you proceed through town, limestone predominates. Um, this is an interesting street sign in um, in Dunleary. The one above Bohor Evring, um, this you know, Burn, Burns Road, and uh, the Newtown Castle Burn, obviously associated with the Burn family, um, Bohri Vrin, um, associated obviously with, with their residence. Um, but it's a solitary sign exclusively in Irish. It's the only one I've found in the area. Um, it's a little uh, a little worse for wear, and uh, one would, would be concerned that it not be lost. And Castle Burn Park, obviously, with, uh, with a very poor Irish translation there. The Italianate influence is very uh, evident in our area as well. Baico Road, Nerano, Sorrento, Moretimo, and uh, Frascati. And for some reason, Frascati is spelled differently in Irish to in English. Um, whatever that is. Moretimo, of course, the home of Lord Cloncurry. 
uh, <clears throat> the reason for it's suggested for the um, the, the Italianate names is the uh, that many of the aristocrats, the young aristocrats, would have gone on the grand tour to um, classical sites in Italy and in uh, Greece and do as well, and would have brought back um, new ideas for architecture, and would have obviously taken back a lot of um, artwork that would have been incorporated into their houses. In fact, um, Lord Clancurria from Retimo shipped uh, four consignments back. The final one was actually lost off Bray Head, just when you might have thought that uh, he had uh, reached home. Um, but <clears throat> some of these houses are gone now, obviously for Scati Moretimo. Um, other the names the names live on. Uh, Frascati Park again. Um, so there are some personal names as well um, that you come across. <clears throat> These are people associated, generally speaking, with the early development of what would mean Kingston, Crosswith Park, John Crosswith, first chairperson of uh, of uh, Kingston Town Commissioners. Newton Smith, named after <clears throat> um, the man who supplied the stone to construct the uh, the harbour, and then there he had the contract to bring stone down from the docky quarries. <laughs> Alma Road, named after the uh, solicitor who constructed uh, that road in Longstown. Emmett Square, <clears throat> probably named um, uh, about the time of the centenary of Robert Emmett's Rebellion in 1903. Uh, Crofton Road, named after John Crofton, also prominent, and it suggested it was he who invited uh, George IV to um, be so magnanimous as to bestow his name on uh, Dunleary at the time. Um, <laughs> Casement Phyllis, Roger Casement, obviously. Gloria O'Connor, also involved in the uh, revolutionary period, the uh, War of Independence. So, <clears throat> and of course, Douglas Hyde, commemorated in uh, Hyde, Hyde Road in Dawkey. Uh, this is Crosswith Park, named after John Crosswith. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely um, sign in its way and, and quite unique uh, in, uh, in, in the area. Um, very prominent in the uh, the Larry area are the um, Longford and De Vesey family. Uh, so their names turn up in various different forms in our area. So you have the <clears throat> De Vesey, De, the Viscount De Vesey was um, well it was also uh, Baron Napton. So you see both. Napton and VC, Napton and De Vesey, but VC was a family name. So you find uh, VC Terrace, Napton Road, De Vesey Terrace, it's all the one family. The uh, Longfords then, the family name was Pakenham, so there's a lot of Pakenhams and Longfords. Um, the De Vesey and Pakenham families came into possession of Monkstown, uh, the Monkstown estate in the late 18th century. And they really controlled development of the entire area um, through much of the 19th century. Um, and they, um, so the, and they, their, their names were, were used very extensively. Uh, the entire, if you like, area of Kingston was built on land uh, shared by these two known uh, as the Lords of the Soil. And this is the, um, if you like, the emblem of the De Vesey family, Castor and Pollux, uh, from uh, Greek legend. Um, the sons of Leda, um, who was, uh, who, and, but by their twins, they had different fathers. Um, curious. A curious feature, obviously, that operated in antiquity. Um, obviously, 
I've drawn attention here and there to street signs as well as uh, case names. And th there's a marvelous range of different types in the uh, general uh, the layer area. Um, and um, these seem to me to add a lot of interest uh, as well. It's worth bearing in mind that some of the older signs have actually weathered and lasted much better than more modern ones. It's also the case, not of some sort of uh, irritation to people who, who, um, who are interested in the Irish language, that a lot of the, a lot of the Irish language forms are actually poorly rendered. Um, they're poorly spelt and um, obviously with little attention to the uh, need for precision. Um, but a lot of these signs are, are, are worth, are worth uh, if you like, retaining for their interest. You, you'll actually find some, um, and on <coughs> Seafield Avenue, there's and there's several other places, you'll see ceramic street signs. Um, and we'll see, you've seen some, uh, some in, in, in the layer as well. Um, but just to sort of uh, draw attention then to some of the street names and place names that are missing in our area. We have never celebrated Charles Halliday. He's a most remarkable person, a humanitarian and a scholar who um, campaigned ceaselessly for the poor of the area during a period of rapid growth in Dunlera in the 19th century. It was he who highlighted the shocking conditions in which people uh, were forced to live while um, superficially Dunlera was a prosperous Kingstown as it was, prosperous, fancy, um, and sophisticated uh, watering place for, for the gentry. Um, he was also a wonderful scholar, and he lived here at, on, on Montan, um, where Christian Brothers College is now. Um, he um, was a scholar of Irish history and spent a very large part of his fortune collecting documents related to Irish history. So great was his collection that when it was eventually um, presented to the Royal Irish Academy on the death of Charles Halliday, um, it was so vast, it was the single largest collection they'd ever received. It was only finally fully catalogued in 2011. They had received it in 1866. Um, Halliday, Richard Toucher, there wouldn't have been a harbour in the Lair without Richard Toucher, a man of, um, he's a Norseman, a Norwegian, who settled in Dublin and <coughs> spent his fortune promoting the uh, I, I campaign for a harbour in uh, Dunleary, as it was at that time. In fact, it's interesting to see. Um, and Leary became Kingstown, became the Leary. Um But Toucher, unquestionably, the uh, most important figure in promoting the um, campaign for a harbour. Um, he convened, this is a consequent on a, a dreadful tragedy, shipping tragedy, a shipwreck in 1807. He convened a meeting in Monkstown and um, was responsible then for uh, driving the project uh, forward. Um, at the time, Dunleer was competing with Holt in this favour at a time when it was very, very difficult to have safe access to Dublin on account of the shifting sands. Um, I should mind, there are others as well. Of course, there are big, the, the Pym sisters uh, from Monkstown who have saved the lives of millions um, who lived on Alma Road they instigate, they, they, they set up the leprosy mission, which has had an impact worldwide and has been um, transformative in the lives of many, many, many people. They aren't publicly celebrated either, anywhere. Mother Mary Martin established the Medical Missionaries of Mary. Um, she's not celebrated either. These are people who did some good in life and I think they uh, deserve uh, our attention as well. Um, Going back a little bit further, though, Shli Hulan, one of the five great roads leading to Tara, passes through our, our area. Um, apart from Kola, um, G. 
GAA club. It's not properly celebrated. I think we. Uh, I think it's worth it's worth mentioning as well. Um, finally, then, just as we're uh, finishing up, here's a little question for you. This is a, a place name. This is off the Leperstown Road, Feyera. Can you guess what it means? Well, Patrick Gerrill suggests that it comes from the Irish Feyera at last. So I'll finish on that note. Thank you for your attention.